morning everybody. I'm hoping you can hear me now and clear over the noise and fatter. Um, I'm on the little case here, 895. Um, it's not as quiet as the Massey would be, but um, we're just on our way over here to the other farm. Um, and uh, we're about to bring a bale of silage here to the young cattle. Um, I have the McHale bale spitter on on the back. It's a nice morning. We have to have a hell of a lot of rain last night. This is a Monday morning. And it rained quite, yeah, rained quite heavy last night and rained right up until 11 o'clock this morning. So I waited until it, would give it to clear up. So I waited until it cleared up because I didn't want to feed any meal to the cattle until um, now when it's raining because uh, I'm not sure when I get over here if it will have rained in or not. Um, I don't think it will have because the rain was coming, kind of the wind and rain was blowing from the southwest. So there shouldn't be any any rain over here or any wet on the, on top of silage or where I'm going to be feeding the cattle. Um, I haven't got blue barrels put in yet. Uh, I know a lot of people mention them to me. Um, cut a few blue bars in half and uh, bolt them together or you don't have to necessarily bolt them together if you don't want. And um, just have them as a place for throwing the meal. I've got the blue barrels, I just haven't got round to cutting it up yet, but I will. Um, it is a good idea. I've seen a lot of people do that. Um, but yeah, this is the main job the wheat case does in the winter time. Uh, it'll be even busier now when the silage pit is, is finished. We have plenty of silage at the moment. We have a, a, a lot of si pit silage left yet. Um, we're into last year's pit now at the minute. We're after finishing, basically finishing off um, the last of the first cut. So we had a quarter of a pit, a little more than a quarter of a pit of last year's silage left over. And we're into that now and it's real dry, lovely, lovely stuff still. So we're gonna use that all up now. And um, we'll get another uh, five weeks at least of silage. So we sh we'll have loads of silage. We we'll have silage not be an issue of the year. So just gonna open this gate here now and uh, go up the pass here to the new shed. And so folks, before we start into the rest of this video, um, I'd like to just take this opportunity to um, ask anybody who is enjoying and liking the content that we're putting up to please just go over there and subscribe to our channel. Um, it's quite easy done, just hit that subscription button. Um, if you don't have an account on YouTube, it's extremely easy to set one up. It only takes a few minutes with an email address and then at least you're able to comment and like and hit notifications um, on, on any channel that you'd like to subscribe to. So if you haven't already subscribed, please just take a moment to subscribe. It helps the channel an awful lot and it gives us um, a great enthusiasm to, to keep uh, putting up as good a content as we can. So this is uh, my McHale bale splitter. Um, I have bought this about, I'd say I have it now about eight, nine years. Um, I have to say it's one of the best investments of Best investments I've made on the farm, um, machinery wise. Well, definitely the handiest. Not expensive. Um, I think they're around 11, 1200 euro plus the VAT. May have got a little bit more expensive um, since I bought it, but uh, definitely a good investment. Um, if you're constantly using bales and um, you're graping and pulling at bales, the first thing you're going to notice is in a few years time your back's going to start giving you trouble mine was doing the same my back as i said before in other videos was giving me trouble um but uh i just said uh, anything that can make the job just a little bit easier uh i'd i'd purchase this definitely was one of those things uh, as i say there's a safety bar that goes on these a lot of people's probably going to question and say where's your safety bar to, what happened to it or why is it missing well you can see the little two remnants there off it on both sides. So basically it's a yellow bar that runs down the length of it and goes around the, the blade. It's supposed to just protect, protect yourself when you're using the blade. Um, I took it off last year. Um, I'll tell you why. When I went on this case, um, when you'd lift, just by the way the arms was and how close it was to the tractor, maybe just the way the, the tractor's lined up, but when we would lift the, the bale lifter up, um, sometimes we would lift the bale and then we would flip it over but 
when that bar would come up and rest, this is the little catches here, the catch it, when it would rest again the cab of the tractor, it would come far too close and it would actually hit the cab of the tractor. It done the same to our 4270 when we owned it. Um, it it would just give the roof of the tractor an awful wrap. And then if you weren't watching what you were doing or you're outside, there's a good chance a gust of wind or a shake or a vibration, it would come down all of a sudden, like just like a sledgehammer. Um, it, so it was dangerous. I didn't like it. Uh, a lot of people are probably going to comment and say oh, it has to be on. That's uh, up to yourselves. Everybody um, has their own opinions on that, but I took I took it off. Um, I wasn't seeing any advantage of it. As I say, when I'm not using the bailiff, the blade is on the ground, down as it is now. Um, I'm never driving on the road or I never leave the blade facing upwards because it's absolutely deadly if you did so. Um, but again, um, I'm going to show you it working now. It's quite straightforward. There's only maintenance wise. There's nearly nothing to it. There's two grease nipples here, one just for the ram on this side and one for the ram here. Um, there's little grease nipples then for the safety bar if it was on. Now I have the safety bar at home um, and uh, before if I go to thread this in for a new one or down the line I can weld it straight back on again. Um, it was too big a job, you can take it off without cutting. Uh, but I was kind of in a rush and I got really annoyed with it one evening because it, it nearly did damaged the tractor badly so I got really annoyed one evening and I just went into the shed and took out the angle grinder because I could see it was going to be a, a long task to get it take it off the normal way so uh, I just cut cut it off on both sides and um, it will fit straight back on again and I can repair it I can weld it back on again without any issues so um, it left it left just that little bit easier didn't need it um, so that's why it came off uh, that's to say there's really no maintenance on it they're heavily constructed um, you know, you'd have to be a real pig in a bog to break something like that, um, because it, it is, it is, it is well constructed. I, uh, there's just the one pin. You might think there's a pin missing here, but there's actually not. That's the way it comes. Um, I'm just hoping that sun isn't destroying this video, so into the shade here. But there's a pin on. You can have the pin on either side. Makes no difference. It only comes with two pins in the middle, and all that pin does is obviously stop the bale from rotating. Um, it doesn't, it's not for carrying the bale whatsoever. The two pins in the middle carry the bale. Uh, if you were carrying a bale, what I do do is lift my blade up, obviously, put your bale on and drop your blade down slightly and let it just pierce into the bale and that will keep it balanced. Now we still have some silage left over. Uh, I thought they would have had it all let. They didn't, they weren't just able to reach it. So I'll clean off this bit here that's left. There's bits of old uh, weeds and things that has built up over the last two bales. So I'm gonna clean that away now with the, with the wheelbarrow and um, I'll push the rest back and then I'll put the next bale up. I'll not put it too tight to get in the barrier because if you do put it too tight, they're claiming to pull the silage into the into the slats. So I'll keep it back. I, as I say, I, I come over here anytime I like and grip it back to them. But I, I tend to try to keep the silage below the level of the the lower bar so that they don't they're not as they're not just as uh, as um, prone to pulling the silage in on top of the slats as they're eating. So yeah, let's get to it now without further ado.
pass it in. So, as you see there, it's a bit lovely. Um, now, there's a couple of questions that you probably will ask, so I'm going to answer them before you ask them. Um, one being, uh, you might ask why it didn't cut straight down the middle in one go. Well, normally it does. Um, but there's two reasons for that. Uh, one, a very important one, is not sharp. It needs to be sharpened. This is only the toward bail it has put in, and I haven't got around to sharpen it. But when I go home now, the first thing I'm doing is I'm going to take it into the shed and I'm going to sharpen it. It is blunt. Blunt as beetle, as we call it. Um, second is, them bales are very dense. Um, it was the type of stuff that it was. It was, it was stuff that was sprayed. Uh, lovely leafy grass. Um, but as you can see, the bales are very, very dense. I mean, dense, they're packed really tight and uh, leaving that little bit harder to cut through. And um, there's a lot of stuff there. But what I intend to do, what I usually do, um, now at home, when I'll be putting in bales, normally one chop, straight down, done. And what happens is, when I would be in the uh, slatted shed at home, uh, that's the one you've seen where the milking cows are, I would put uh, four bales down in the middle of the house. So put in my four bales, strip it down, and then when I'd split it down the middle, it would fall just perfectly land on the wooden rails, or the wooden uh, wood at the bottom of the rails on both sides. So the cows have enough without me touching it for for um, at least 24 hours, like so. Uh, I'd do that and then put in the next one, do the same, and I'd have a nice, a nice fill of silage um, the whole way down. So uh, another good part as well is um, extremely easy to grape pack compared to pit silage. Pit silage, you'd be graping and graping and graping and uh, with this you're lifting a lot more um, very easy once it's split it, there's no pollen no pollen apart it just comes in in big lumps it's extremely easy to grip back and that's a huge 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 plus to having a bale splitter um, a lot of people have questioned me about um, the use of it we're standing here because there's a nice little gust of wind just coming there now but a lot of people have, have sent me messages a huge number of people have sent me messages on Instagram on on YouTube look uh, ask me my opinion on on the on the bale splitter and they think it's worth worth purchasing definitely definitely worth purchasing and um, there's very little you can go wrong with them but they are a very very handy piece of kit to have on your farm if you're handling bales on a regular basis i know it's a cost but to say you could pick one up second hand and uh you would get it for very little money if you if you if you search about um it's an investment it's an investment if you can make it it's, it's watered so that's my opinion on that i got that one in jared clark's uh, new inns county cavern and uh, they supply all mikhail stuff mikhail bailers anything mikhail they'll have it i don't know any other brands other brands is probably a hundred percent um it's just that's the only that's the one i have and that's that's the one that was there the day i came to look at look for one and that's the one i took as you've probably seen on the review of this tractor you need to have um an hydraulic top link as well on your on your tractor um to walk it properly because you're going to be tilting your bale up and down um then you need to tilt your prongs down onto the ground to get onto your bale to split it um then when you're picking your bale up you need to be able to lift lift your prongs up at the air or your pins up at the air to lift your bale so you can carry it properly um so hydraulic top links is vital um this tractor came with only one uh, spool valve um i searched and i searched and i searched for a spool valve for it and just couldn't get one i was amazed because they're a popular tractor and i just at that time i just couldn't get one um so what i done was i came up with an alternative of buying this um cylinder here and, and basically it's just a electronic switch over very same as a relay valve um or a relay switch um i should say because that's basically the same thing only as an oil version so you have your two main spool valves you take them off you plumb them straight into this then it has a splitter electronic splitter you push a little button which you can mount anywhere inside your cab and once you push your button it will um, convert the oil from one side to the other valve so you can operate um either valve so when you push the button i can walk the top link let go of the button then i'm working the 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 knife up and down so it's a simple little bit of kit fitted myself didn't take very long um but terrific so, done that job worked worked perfect you probably see i kept the bale out a little bit from the cattle that's what i tend to do uh now normally i wouldn't put in a bale until the other's completely yet and cleaned but i came over this morning i, I thought the I honestly thought the would had it all yet but they weren't fit to, they must have threw it out in front of them and they just weren't fit to get it all so um just for the video purposes, I just said I had everything over here with me to make the video and I just said, look, it, I'll put it in and keep it a little bit further out and uh, it's fine to do that. So, But normally I would wait until the silage is all out 
Um, well, this, this girl here quit pulling the trousers off me, I'd get the video uh, made a wee bit easier. So that's it for another video. Any questions you have on that Mikhail splitter or anything like that, just don't be afraid to put them down in the comment section. Um, we'll get back to as many comments as I can. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody who has subscribed to our channel. Please, uh, if you haven't already, do so. If you like our videos, and hit that little like button. There's a little bell on the right-hand corner. You can click that little bell and it will notify you of any uh, upcoming videos. As soon as they're uploaded, you'll get a, a, little, a little alarm on your phone or a little ping on your phone to tell you that the video is up so you can be kept up to date on what's happening. Also, you can step over there to Instagram and follow us on it. There's updates daily on, on things that are happening on the farm and videos that are being ready to be uploaded. So, uh, yeah, both options there. So, folks, thanks for watching, and we will catch you very shortly on the next one.